Mention the name Rolls-Royce, and probably the first thing you'll think about is the quintessentially British luxury cars. The brand that says, look at me, I've made it. Beloved by rappers, pop stars, entrepreneurs, and royalty. But the cars are only a small part of a much bigger business that helped change the world as we know it. So what else do Rolls-Royce do other than making rather posh cars? The Rolls-Royce that we see today is quite a different business to how it started out in 1906 with a collaboration of Henry Royce, a car builder and engineer, and Charles Rolls, the owner of one of the first quality car dealerships. Whilst Rolls-Royce started out making luxury cars, it soon entered the aero engine market during the First World War because of the quality of their engineering, starting with a contract to make engines under license from Renault. Ironically, Charles Rolls, who was an early aviator, was killed in an air accident in 1910, just four years after the company's formation and he gained the unenvied title of being the first Briton to be killed in a powered airplane accident. During the First World War, Henry Royce designed the company's first aero engine called the Eagle, based in part on an enlarged version of a Rolls-Royce Silver Ghost car engine. After the war, Rolls-Royce Eagle engines powered the first non-stop transatlantic flight by Alcock and Brown in 1919, and then the first flight from England to Australia, which is a testament to their reliability even in those early days. In the 1930s, the aero engine side of the business produced one of the most memorable engines ever to be made, the 27-litre Merlin V12. This was the last engine to be designed by the remaining founder, Henry Royce, before his death in 1933. The Merlin V12 went on to power some of the most iconic and effective fighters and bombers used by the Allies in World War II, including the Supermarine Spitfire, the Hawker Hurricane, the Avro Lancaster, and the North American P-51 Mustang the engine of which was built in the US under license by Packard. In all, over 200,000 Merlins were produced and because of the engine's performance and durability, they are credited with being one of the factors in providing victory for the Allies. Before the end of the war, Rolls-Royce took the first jet engine developed by Frank Whittle to produce the Rolls-Royce RB23 Welland. Britain's first production jet engine, which was fitted to the Gloucester Meteor in 1943. Although the RB23 was only a short-lived engine, just 167 were built, it set the sights of Rolls-Royce firmly on jet engine development and production. In the following decades, through a series of company takeovers, Rolls-Royce ended up with the Olympus, the jet engine for the nuclear V-Force the most famous of which was the Vulcan Bomber. This, in due course, led to the Rolls-Royce Snecma Olympus 593, which powered the world's first and only supersonic plane, the Concorde. In the late 1960s, Rolls-Royce developed the RB211, the world's first three-spool engine for the new generation of wide-bodied jets like the Lockheed TriStar. This would turn Rolls-Royce into a global leader in the aero engine business and provide the basis for the current generation of Trent engines. However, problems in the development of the new engine forced the original Rolls-Royce company into administration, leading to it being nationalised by the British government. In 1973, it was split into two separate companies. Rolls-Royce Motors, which made the cars, and was ultimately sold to BMW in 1998 and Rolls-Royce Holdings PLC, which continued to make aero engines. Rolls-Royce's aero engines were not only used for planes but also for power generation as backup for nuclear power stations and for filling in for peak demand for the UK's national grid, as well as offshore power units for situations like oil rigs. Their engines are also found in ships and submarines, 
The Rolls-Royce MT-30 gas turbine generators are used to power some of the most modern ships in navies around the world, including the US Navy's newest and largest destroyer ever built, the USS Zumwalt. This $3.5 billion ship has an all-electric drive system powered by two 35.4 megawatt Rolls-Royce MT-30s along with two 3.8 megawatt Rolls-Royce RR4500 turbine generators. This total of 78 megawatts of power is almost equal to that of a nuclear-powered aircraft carrier and can run the ship and the equivalent of a small town at the same time. The Rolls-Royce MT-30 uses a Trent 800 aerojet engine like those fitted to the Boeing 777s. The Royal Navy's latest super aircraft carriers, the HMS Queen Elizabeth and the HMS Prince of Wales, due in 2017 and 2020 respectively, also use dual Rolls-Royce MT-30s to power their 20 megawatt electric drives. The planes that will be used on the new Royal Navy aircraft carriers include the Lockheed Martin F-35 Lightning II. The Rolls-Royce lift system allows the F-35 vertical takeoff and thrust vectoring whilst being able to travel at supersonic speeds. Rolls-Royce also make nuclear pressurised water reactors for the Royal Navy's Trident nuclear missile submarines. In keeping with the biggest US Navy destroyer, Rolls-Royce makes the Trent 900 engines for the largest commercial aircraft in the world, the Airbus A380. These huge Rolls-Royce Trent XWB97 engines produce 97,000 pounds of thrust each at takeoff and have a fan diameter of just under 10 feet across. These, along with other world-leading engines like the Trent 1000 for the Boeing 787 Dreamliner, show just how far Rolls-Royce have come from their original vision of Charles Rolls and Henry Royce to make quality cars back in 1906. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, then please thumbs up, subscribe, share, and comment. And don't forget, we have other videos available which you may also find interesting on the link which is showing now. So until the next time, it's goodbye from me.